Hey everyone, Amanda here. Okay, so many requests for this video. I'm sorry guys, it's taken me so long to do this. But I'm going to show you guys how to mark your 36 inch, 3 8 gauge Cindy Wood Universal S Loom. This is the smallest of their Universal S Looms. I'm going to show you how to mark it for the figure 8 stitch. I'll show you how to mark and do the figure 8 stitch. A couple things you need to know. What I'm using as markers, you want to use something different. Like if you can go like Crafts 2000, Joanne, Fabrics, Pactans, Michaels, Walmart, wherever. These will work a lot better. Just the little stitch markers. Because see, they fit perfectly. Or you can use uh, rubber bands. If you plan on doing your loom in the same pattern a lot, you can take like a little dot of fingernail polish and put on the heads of the pegs that I'm doing. One thing I do want to say though is the way I wrap this loom is not the only way you can wrap it. I will show you how I come up with the way to wrap it, what pegs I mark, and then you can either use the way I do it or you can come up with your own. First of all, let's go over loom setup. Be due to all the numbers of pegs, I start with the white peg and count till I'm done with this side. Then I rotate it and start with what would be the white peg on this side and count. That helps a lot with um, just keeping track of the pegs. Okay, so of course all the peg numbers will be in the description below. Um, but the pegs you want to mark, starting with your white peg you go one two you count the white one as one two three four five six so peg six peg eight eleven fourteen seventeen twenty twenty three twenty six twenty nine thirty two thirty five thirty eight forty one forty four forty seven fifty fifty three and 56 and if you notice a really easy way to remember how to mark this is you do six you mark the sixth you skip one you mark number eight after that there's two pegs in between each mark so you have two open mark two open mark two open mark all the way over to peg 56 it does the same on the opposite side as well there is one difference See, I've knocked one of these off, but it'll be easy to figure out where I knocked it off at. Um, there is one difference. There we go. That was on the wrong peg. This side starts with peg six. This side starts with peg seven. Skips one. You mark peg nine, and then you skip two pegs, mark two pegs, mark two pegs, mark all the way to peg 54. Sorry. Yeah. All the way to peg 54 on the other side. Um, so I'll go over the numbers. 7, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, 33, 36, 39, 42, 45, 48, 51, and then 54. Again, they are in the description. Now that we got that done, and for this, once you do your first wrap, you can take all these off. Um, you don't have to keep them on there after that point. A couple things I've done to help out with this. Oh, might help if my yarn's not tangled up. I'm just using some, it's a, it's a really pretty Caron Simply soft yarn, actually. Uh, and this is just a number four worsted weight yarn. Um, I suggest doing a little swatch, which you don't have to wrap the whole thing. And if you just wrap like part of it, work it out a few inches, and then just do a quick cast off just to get it off the loom and see if you like how it's turning out. Then, because you might want to use actually for the rake style, I think a number five yarn would make it a lot nicer than a number four just because of the space in between. But I haven't had a chance to really try it out. I've just figured out how to wrap it. Now the figure eight. For the figure eight stitch, let me zoom in. 
it is exactly how it sounds. Now one thing I've done is this is just a drinking straw. You can use your tensioner you got um, as long as you can easily get it in between the pegs. As you can see like the straw is perfect. So that's what I'm using as a tensioner, just a regular drinking straw and I've just got it wrapped around my uh, anchor peg. Hold the yarn up this way so it's not in the way. I'm wrapping around the first peg and I'm going up, I'm skipping these three. Wrapping the top. I'm going to try to do this slow so you can kind of follow along. Now the way I figure out how to wrap these is, of course I know the stitch, but let's see if I would wrap this one and go over, see how it's stretching that stitch. Because if I would keep going, it just keeps stretching it more and more. I just try to keep it so that this stitch right here from this peg to this peg is pretty straight and then the next one it just angles just a little bit not too much so this one I'm going to skip one I'm going up there once I get going around these curves it'll be a lot easier to see what I'm talking about okay like here's a pretty good example if I wrapped this bottom one and kept going I'll show you what will happen Oops. But see how it's just causing that to stretch real long I probably didn't have to skip the peg I did but it was easy for me to be able to do the skipped pegs in twos I do my best to keep when I skip pegs I try to keep it as symmetrical on one side as the other because sometimes due to the yarn you use the pegs you skip may leave like a slight line in the material that you end up with but it's um, symmetrical so it looks like it's part of the design okay so I'll just wrap some of this I'm just skipping the pegs I've got marked see how much easier it is with a tensioner I can quickly go in and out of these pegs I don't have to sit there and torque the uh, loom all around but I will go ahead and wrap just one whole row so you can see just how fast using your tensioner you can wrap them. Oops. Other than the fact that I got a knot in my yarn. Sorry guys. Sorry. I'm trying to get this out quick. Okay. <laughs> now if you are using a drinking straw and you notice that's a little too bendy, just take two drinking straws and put one inside the other. Okay, now see I'm at this middle point. So now I start skipping pegs on the opposite side. Now I this at this moment in time this this is the only loom I have in the smaller gauge so um, it will be a while before I do videos of how to wrap the others so I do hope that I'm able to explain how to do this well enough that if you want to mark your own or figure out how to wrap uh, one of the larger ones that you will have all the tools necessary to do it yourself. But whenever I get my hands on them, I will do videos. Okay, and now on this end, if you keep wrapping here, like if you wrap farther in, it'll leave kind of a weird, uh, the ends just won't really fit. All right, I took a quick pause. All right, I pushed all the stitches down on the pegs. Um, one thing I do want to show is this is optional, but I do this because it helps me finish off my cast on edge. Something completely optional to do, but this is just a little trick that will really help you get your cast on and cast off edges looking the same. Take a long piece of scrap yarn. You want a contrasty collar. Because what we want to do is we want to be able to hold out this first row. Oh, where's my loom tool? Which what I'm doing is I'm just pulling the yarn down through. Just here, get this other string out of the way and I can show you. All right, I just pulled it down in front of the first stitch here. And then... 
take and just put it in between it doesn't have to be real tight it can be loose it really doesn't matter and then I'm going to come up through this end and pull it down because this string only serves one purpose and that is okay I made it way too long the only purpose this string has is to separate this first row of stitches out that is it so what I typically do is I take a real long string and then I'll just tie it down here so it doesn't accidentally get pulled out and then at this point you can actually go through and take all of these off because everything is marked you're not going to be changing anything which I'm not going to waste time with that now as you can see we are on this peg right here in needle knitting what I'm going to do is considered a slip stitch uh, it is a pro it is used to create a smoother edge and to help with curling so no matter which direction you're coming from if you're from this side or this side the peg that your yarn is coming from for your next row you skip it so I'm not wrapping that peg a second time what I am going to do is I just follow the pattern all the way back to the first peg make Now, if when you're done with the row, you realize you skipped the wrong peg, you can actually just pick the stitch up, move it over without having to undo the whole row. It's a easy fix. So if you're, I, I do it every once in a while. I just in a rush, not paying attention to what I'm wrapping and I'll get to the end of the row and I'm already done with half of it, taking the knitting it off, taking the bottom stitch over the top stitch and I'll realize I have something on the wrong pegs. It's just, it's a real easy fix. You just pick it up with the loom tool and move it to the next stitch. Move it where it needs to be. Okay. Now what I do, instead of just tying this to the anchor peg, I will go ahead and start with, actually at this point, I'm just dump this upside down, get all my stitch markers off. I will take that very first peg, which you want to be careful, you don't want to pull this too tight, well too, you don't want to pull this too much because you have your anchor yarn still there. After you do it the first time, you can actually unwind the anchor yarn whichever way it unwinds. I don't know what I did here. Alright, I'll just pull it out this way. Um, and you can actually take and pull it down below so that it is out of the way as well. There we go. That way it's not hanging out and it's out of the way. But at this point, all you do is you take your bottom loops, over the top loops, push everything down, rewrap. And you do that until it is as long as you want. Any questions or comments, um, leave them in the comment. You can leave them in the comment section below. Or you can email me or Cindy Wood directly. Of course, all of that info is in the description below as well. Uh, a little heads up, I do respond quicker through email than through comments on my videos. I, I'm i sorry, but there are a lot of video comments that get overlooked just because of how many I get, and it's hard for me to kind of keep up with all of them. But I try. Sometimes it, it's a couple months later before I realize it, just because the way it's all set up, there's a lot that goes through different filters and stuff that I miss. Um... And I apologize for that. I'm so sorry if you've tried to comment on something, had questions, email me. Email's in the description. And of course, again, the peg numbers that you skip for the stitch are in the description as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. And there will be, I will do a separate video on how to show you how to cast off and how to finish up your edge.